Let's pray. Holy God, uh, may the words that I speak and the meditations in our hearts be acceptable in your sight. Uh, you move here by the power of your spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay. Um, so there's a preacher one day that was preaching about forgiving your enemies, right? Uh, and we just covered that a week or two ago. And, and he got through the sermon and he said, all right, now how many of y'all are going to forgive your enemies? About half the congregation raised their hand. So he preached another 15 or 20 minutes. <laughs> said, all right, now how many of y'all, about 80% of the congregation raised their hand. So he launched off again, preached another 20 minutes or so. And he finally said, okay, now how many of y'all are going to forgive your enemies? And everybody in the church, but one 99-year-old woman in the back of the church, raised her hand. And he said, Sister Sue, no, I'm not. <laughs> okay, <I'm> not. <laughs> Sister Kate, I'm not there. Sister Kate. <laughs> so, how old are you? She said, 99. He said, come on up here and tell us how you Live to be 99 and, and have forgiven all your enemies. So she she made it to the front and turned around and she said, I outlive all of them. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's one strategy, I guess. Uh, anyway, so we all struggle with that enemies thing, right? I mean, that's kind of one of those things that's a thorn in our side, I dare say, can be. Uh, wanted to talk to you about that's a that's the title of uh invest in fraternity this picture is kind of unique it's uh it's a picture of jewish children that were harbored this is just a, a small sample of the children that were harbored in a community called Le Chambon in france i'll probably mispronounce that Le Chambon de Silver it's got a longer name, uh, in France, which was uh, occupied by the Germans. Uh, it's kind of a cool story. Um, there was the pastor there, Andre Trocme, I probably slaughtered his name, and, and his wife Magda, uh, that got there in the late 30s. Uh, to this community uh, before it fell to the to the Nazis and began to preach about taking care of your neighbor, right? And and being being used by God in, in the midst of issues, you know, in, in the midst of this culture, in the midst of the darkness, in the midst of being behind enemy lines, right? In which they would find themselves behind the enemy lines soon enough. They, uh, they came to be a community <coughs> where many of the, the people who lived there harbored Jewish uh, people fleeing refugees, fleeing the Nazi regime, coming in and trying to find uh, a place to go. They would keep some of, some of them they kept for years children that whose parents were sent to the concentration camps in Auschwitz and elsewhere. Uh, the children would somehow would get away as that the parents would make sure the children snuck off and they would end up in Le Chambon oftentimes. And the estimates anywhere from 800 to 5,000 people, Jews, were harbored by the people of this community in the middle of the occupation. The Germans occupied that town. They had a, a garrison in town, the Nazis did, and they tried to, they ended up uh, arresting uh, Trockme, Andre Trockme, and um, kept him imprisoned and gave him an opportunity after four months to sign a document saying that he would not, you know, do anything to help the, the Jews. He would not sign it. They ended up letting him go anyway. And uh, so they, they stood there in the middle of, 
I think we could say that was darkness, could we not? Uh, in the middle of that darkness, and they were a light. Now they had to be very careful. There was, there were they, there were times when they knew the Nazis were were coming, uh, going to raid. You know, they would send all the Jewish children and all out into the woods to just go stay out in the woods. Sometimes it was snowing and ice and all. They'd go in really adverse conditions and hide. Talking about dozens of them at the time, and, and they they hit them in their lofts, they hit them in their barns, you know. They and they tried to they they taught them at school. They 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 had classes for the kids. It was something. It, go uh, there's a video actually on YouTube. If you look up Lay Shambon C H A M B E O N, you can find a lot of information about it. It was uh, it was one of the Jewish organizations in, in Tel Aviv or Jerusalem uh, proclaimed them righteous of the nations, right? Because of, because of what they did to save Jews. These were Christians, okay? They weren't Jews. They were Christian people. And they, they, they took their Christianity to heart and they helped their neighbor who was in utter distress, right? Um, they didn't expect to be rewarded in this life for what they did. They just quietly went about it and it, everybody understood what everybody else was trying to do. There were organizations like the Salvation Army, the Quakers who, who, who supported them, you know, secretly, you know, send them supplies, money, that sort of thing so that they could they could take care of these all these people because it was such a hardship on them but you know god made a way and they knew that what they were doing was god's work because it was god's people right uh, so uh i i said that out before you but, you know we don't have thank god we don't have nazis today in, in this culture in this life uh, hopefully anywhere, but we do have some other regimes that are poison. Uh, North Korea comes to mind. Uh, there are others that are questionable. Syria, what's going on there? I mean, I don't know. Uh, so as we look at our own culture, you know, and, 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 and is it being seemingly a little more uh, secular all the time? I mean, all you got to do is look at the statistics to see, you know, that the you know, less and less people are attending church. Uh, more and more people are, it's called the rise of the nuns, people who were, who are not affiliated with any kind of faith uh, group at all, uh, is especially the millennials, the younger people, it's, uh, it's their rising church attendance and, and participation is, is declining. Um, and, and we see that everywhere, right? I mean, it's not just, you know, on the church rolls. But uh, so we, we find ourselves in a precarious situation. You know, how do we resist the sinful culture and be a part of Christ's resistance to that worldly influence here in the world? Be that whatever it may be, right? Bigotry, uh, trafficking people, right? I mean, there's so much that, that we can that we can do. Uh, feeding the hungry, clothing the naked, you know, that kind of thing. There's homeless people that are, I mean, you look at California, think about California, how, how the homeless population is swollen there. It's not just California, y'all. <laughs> it's here, too. Uh, it's Nacogdoches Lufkin. There's homeless people here, too. So, I mean... You know, uh, so so may this kind of stir some thinking in you uh, about how can we be part of the resistance, right? The, remember the French resistance, you know, uh, how they were, it was an underground group, group organization kind of that fought against the, the, the Nazis uh, that worked, had spies, you know, and, and whatever to, to, to try and undermine what the Nazis were trying to do. Um, in some kind of way, 
we can stand against the, the, the tidal wave of the culture also. It may seem overwhelming. Imagine how they felt <laughs> at that point in time. You know, their, their government was overrun by the Germans, right? The Germans took over France, right? There, you've all seen the pictures of uh, Hitler under the Arc de Triomphe in, in Paris, right? I, I mean, you've seen those pictures of the goose steppers, you know, marching through the Arc. Uh, we saw them there this summer uh, when we were in Paris. So how, how can we, how can you let the Holy Spirit work in your heart and life to help help uh, bubble up some some ideas, some thoughts about how we can we can uh, you know, and it may be as much, as little as as, as su financially supporting something. I mean, we're trying to do some stuff, right? Just think about it. Anyway, I, I'm not trying to spoon feed y'all. Okay. All right, that's behind enemy lines. The light within. West Festmer said, no, great, no degree of worldly darkness can extinguish the glow of a soul's inner light. Um, Jesus tells us that uh, he has this view, or at that point in time, the cultural view at that point in time was that the, the eye was a lamp that shone inward, okay? Instead of the eye being the, the lamp of the soul, it's shown inward, right? And, and that's what illuminated your heart. It's kind of, that, that was the cultural understanding. And if your eye was unsound or confused, or, or if you were, you know, following the darkness, how dark is that darkness, right? It's because it's, it's shining back into you. But by the same token, um, if, you, if you were a person who was, trying to follow the light and, 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 and seeking God, uh, looking in the right directions, trying to be a light, that, that that just brought out the light that was in you, right? Uh, so the whole, your whole life, that light shines uh, brightly in the darkness. Uh, so if, uh, is, that, is that who you are? Is that who you, we are? As a people, are we trying to to follow the light? Are we allowing Christ's light into us to transform us? Right? Are we doing that, or are we blundering around? You know, following the world. Okay, so God over money. Uh, there were three boys that were talking one day. Uh, out on the playground, and, and one of them said, hey, my dad's better than your dad because all he has to do is write down a few words on a piece of paper, call it a poem, and he gets $50 for that. And the other kid said, hey, my dad's better than that. All he does is write down a few words on a piece of paper and calls it a song, and he gets $100. And the other kid said, hey, I got all y'all beat. So my dad writes a few uh, words down on a piece of paper, calls it a sermon, and it takes eight people to take up all the money. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if that were only so. <laughs> well, uh, uh, so Jesus talking about money, right? It, it's really more complex than that. Because the Aramaic word he uses here, and you've heard it, is mammon, mammon. Uh, it's not just money. It's basically physical possessions, property, uh, whatever it is that, that you purchase, that you, you know, hang on to, that, that can become an idol for you. And, and, and it's, uh, this is one of the places where Jesus elevates uh, the desire for personal properties and, and possessions to the same level as God. So kind of what he's saying here is we're going to serve something in this life. It's not like we're self-sufficient and we decide who or what we serve. We do. But it's either God or it's, it's 
in this instance, is possessions. It could be popularity, right? It could be power. But you're going to serve something. Someone or something is going to be your God or idol, whatever the case may be. And, and that's kind of what he's saying is, uh, what is competing for first place in your life, right? Uh, is, is it mammon? Is it possessions? Uh, all that stuff? Or, or is it God? And, and he's suggesting that we make a choice in life that we get to choose. And, you know, it's easy for us to get all caught up. I mean, you know, I mean, American living the American dream, right? It, what is all that? Yeah, it's all about us, you know, getting that, that nice house, that nice car or truck, that, you know, all that stuff, you know, wearing the right clothes, you know, and the right job, you know, all that stuff, you know. Uh, keep it up with the Joneses, yeah? Uh, anyway, so that, Pursuing that, it's an empty, it's an empty life. It, it's it's not gonna. We're never gonna get enough, right? Have y'all ever tried it? I mean, I know I have. It's you. You're always waiting for that next job promotion or 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 you know that next raise. You know, when I get my next raise, I'm gonna you know I'm gonna be able to you know really live the way I want to live. I'm gonna, you know all that stuff, and and it's just. You know, six months later, you're just like, oh, this ain't really all I thought it would be. I, I really want this other, and, and, and I can't get that until I, you know, get do something else. So, anyway, uh, so human life, in human life, we inescapably serve something. We're, we're, we have loyalties, and we're going to devote them somewhere. It's a matter of choice. We we choose. So, uh, and now you have to remember that Jesus isn't speaking directly to society at large, right? He's he's speaking to people that are trying to be his followers, not just the twelve disciples. They're there too, yeah. But there were many other people that he was talking to that want to follow him, that want to understand what it means to follow him. And it's, they, they're trying to figure it out. And yeah, it's a struggle. <clears throat> I mean, if you, if you look at this Sermon on the Mount, I don't know about you, but... Uh, To me, it's, it, just, it just says it ain't just a one-time profession of faith and then you walk on, you know, walk out the doors of the church and go live life the way you want to live. There, there's a serious disconnect with that and the Sermon on the Mount because that's the life Jesus is wanting us to live and, and it means letting go of all of that. Is that hard to do? I'm it is for me. It's really hard because this this world wants to get your affections, your loyalty, wants your priority right on it. But the strange thing, y'all, the funny thing is, if you if if you make God first in your life. And it ain't easy to do. It's, it continues to be a struggle to, to, to even attempt to do that, right? But when you do that and you begin to try to serve God out of your heart and your life and, and, and you begin to say, you know, everything I have is yours, Lord. It's not really mine. It belongs to you. Then you kind of, be, you know, you begin to see things the world, everything in, in, in a proper light. And God blesses you. Malachi. I mean, I 
I didn't mean for this to get over all the money, but it, <laughs> but he talks about it in Malachi, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse and see if I will not pour out a blessing, an unmeasured blessing upon you. There's a song in the Bad Broadman hymnal about that. <laughs> you know, speaking of songs, uh, once we get, when we get, do that hard work of, 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 of turning our affections toward God. And yeah, money is part of that. Yeah, I'm not saying it ain't. It is. And you, you begin to exalt God in your life. Put the time in. Yeah, this takes time. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I'm not trying to add anything else on your plate. There might be some stuff you can take off when you put God first. Right? I'm just saying, yeah, it's a struggle there too. Um, but when you invest in eternity, which is God, you're going to reap a reward. And it's, the peace of God is going to flood your heart and your life. And you're going you're be to begin to see the blessings of God rain down in your life. You're going to begin to see the, the little the little stepping stones that he's placing out in front of you for you to step on as you as you make that journey. Is he going to give you a ten year plan? Heck no. He might tell you what you're going to do today because he wants us to have faith in him to trust him. Not to say, okay, God, I got a 10-year plan now. I'll check back with you in 10 years. <coughs> no. He wants, he knows we need him in our heart and life every day, right? And he wants to be there with us. And he wants us to live to him. And when we do, our, our whole life will come into alignment. Amen. It will. It's, 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 you know, it defies logic, human logic, but it will, it will, it, it, your, your, <laughs> everything that seems to be out of control will just begin to line up and, and you'll begin to, miracles will happen in your financial, in your finances. I mean, I'm, I'm living proof of that. It's so hard. It's so hard for us, though. So hard for us to let go. But that's what Jesus is trying to tell us, y'all. Put God first. That's hard. I'm, that's He's asking a lot, but he's not asking any more than what he did because there's that little going to the cross thing and paying that price that we couldn't pay thing. So it, 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 don't whine to him, okay? Because <laughs> he ain't going to put up with it, right? He's going to go, okay, yeah, well, whatever. Then follow me, right? You, you've got one choice. Follow me or follow the world. It's that simple. But when you follow Jesus, hard as that may seem, I will blessings abound and you're storing up treasure where he is right you're not you're not putting it here and I'm not saying you don't, you can't have a bank account you can't have money and you can't have property but you have to have it in the right heart and and in the right right way understanding that God owns it and that at any, at any time he can call in the <laughs> Call in the note on it and say, okay, I need you to sell that property, give the money to so-and-so. Bank. And, you know, you can listen or you, you can make a choice, right? <laughs> you can make a choice. Are there ways to, are there, I'm just going to throw this one out as a, as a, you know, you do what you want to do. This is, I'm not trying to get in your business. But uh, hey, if nothing else, many of us have estate plans, right? I mean, for when we pass on, 
Yeah. I mean, we all probably want to leave something to our kids, right? But you know what? You can leave something to to further the ministry of Christ in your estate. Doesn't cost you anything today, right? You can make sure your kids are taken care of enough. And, and you know, peel something out to, to uh, you know, I don't care, Salvation Army. Do a scholarship for a seminary student. Yeah, something like whatever. Something to further the cause of Christ in this world. You can give it to this church. You can give it to, I don't know. I'm not trying to. Why wouldn't we want to do something like that, you know? At least consider it, pray about it. Because it doesn't cost you anything now, right? I mean, there are ways you can you can support, you know, without it just like, like killing you. Anyway, put God first. Is it hard? Yeah. I have a struggle every day. I don't know about you. But when you take that, that time to, to go to the Lord and pray, to, to read scripture, to, to come and worship and thank God y'all did today. I'm glad y'all are here. I hope God blessed you. I hope God taught you something here today that he loves you and he wants your, you to be a part of his family now and forever. And he wants to shower you with, you know, we don't even know what the rewards in heaven are like. You know, it's hard for us to even imagine that. But there's some kind of reward for, for what we've done in this world. And he wants you to get everything you've got coming. Trust me. We're our own worst enemy on that when we choose not to, right? And, and, and it's our choice. So just saying, okay, we're going to stand and sing our closing song. I guess we're going to hum it or what?